This was such a huge book month for me. I think I read more books this month than any other month of probably of my entire life. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Mandy the Handmade Homeschooler and I am a book nerd and I read a lot of books. I did not realize how many books I read until I really started up my Goodreads account again and I kind of started keeping track of all of the books I read and I realized how many books I go through. I go through a lot of books. So we're gonna chat about all these books. I read everything from children's literature to YA to adult to secular to, uh, there's so many books in this roundup. I have a blog that I'm gonna link down below where I go into more detail about these books. And I suggest if you like these to follow me on Goodreads and on Instagram because that's where I update my books the most and where you're going to see the most book content out. Okay, so one of the things that I want to make known here is I don't do a lot of physical books anymore because one, I don't have the space. I am quickly, quickly, quickly running out of bookshelves. And the bookshelves that I do have are overflowing. Like it's, it's bad, it's so bad. So I only have one physical book for the entire month and the rest are all Kindle books. So my husband got me a brand new Kindle for Christmas. I got I got one of the new Kindle Paperwhites and I pay for a Kindle Unlimited subscription, which is basically this service that they have for Kindle users where you can get books for free. You can read books for free. And I think I pay like, it might be $9.99 or $14.99, I can't remember. But either way, it saves me oodles of money because if I would have bought all these books, I would have spent a couple hundred dollars and I paid like less than $15. So, and it's not all old books. What I have found is a lot of new releases come out on Kindle Unlimited, which is like so exciting for me, especially when it's a book that I've been waiting for and it's coming out on Kindle Unlimited. I don't even have to like pre-order it. I can just get it on my Kindle. So it's so cool. I love it. And they have books for adults. They have books for teens, for kids. They have cookbooks. They have drawing books, um, some books that we use for school. And of course, just oodles of novels. So my family saves a lot of money by using the Kindle Unlimited subscription. All right, let's jump into these books. What I did was I actually read a lot of the popular books too this month on Kindle Unlimited for you Kindle users. So you can kind of see what's in the content of these books. I thought that would be a really good way to kind of see like what are they actually promoting with some of these books. Now there are tons of Christian literature books on there and like Christian uh, fiction books and nonfiction books on there. So don't worry, there's tons of Christian content on there. But I wanted to see what some of the popular ones were like because let's be real, that's what most people are going to read. So I thought it would be a good idea to do some of the popular books too. All right, so the first book is The Echo of, of Old Books. This was a huge book on Kindle Unlimited and just like in general. This was a very, very popular book. It is by Barbara Davis. I'm reading over here on my laptop so I don't misspeak. All right, so I read this at the very beginning of the month, maybe like the last few days of December. So I'm gonna try really hard to remember everything in this book, but I gave it a two and a half out of five stars for multiple reasons. If I was just rating a book based on the cover, it would have been a five star rating. And that's actually what drew me in was the cover of this book because it looks like an old bookshop, which is actually like where this book centers around. I loved that. I thought it was an intriguing story. I actually listened to it on audio. Um, I have AirPods and I just pop my AirPods in and I listen to it. So content wise, that's where the warnings come in. It's not super explicit, but there's a lot of like, premarital stuff going on here, which kind of made me feel super uncomfortable, but I hated it because it was like such an intriguing story that they just like threw these things in there for really no, no good reason. It's like, it, it was so unnecessary 
and they could have written the story without it. Like it, it really was not needed. Also, there was a lot of um, taking the Lord's name in vain, which I really did not like either. There was, um, there is a touch of supernatural in there, but the story doesn't center around it type of thing. Like it's, it's very light. All in all, it was kind of frustrating. It was a really frustrating read and I found the main character to be one of the most frustrating characters I have ever read about. That was really difficult for me. And I, I was, I think I just like wanted to finish the book because I wanted to see if maybe she would change, but she just kept being the most frustrating person ever. Two and a half out of five stars, I wouldn't recommend it. The next one, Kiera Cass's A Thousand Heartbeats. This is a YA book for your girls. I reviewed this one on all my social medias because I wanted you guys to see this book. First, the cover is beautiful. Second, Kiera Cass is a Christian author. She doesn't write Christian stories, but she is with a bigger publisher and writes clean content for your teen girls. A Thousand Heartbeats has kind of that same feel as the selection because it's about a princess and pretty dresses, but also swords and war. And I binge read that book so fast. I don't think I have read a YA book that I read so quickly that had so many pages. I think this was like a 400 page book. I read it so fast. Your girls are gonna love this one. It's so good. I gave this one a solid four out of five stars. Probably could have rounded it to like four and a half too. It reminded me of the historical K-dramas that I love, but like a, a pretty princess version of them. It was just, it was so cool. So there's no explicit scenes in this book. There is some kissing, nothing explicit in here. It's, it's really clean. There is talk of war. There is death. Um, I mean, it wouldn't be a princess story without, without a couple of deaths and beheadings now, would it? So, you know, that's thrown in there. It makes it very interesting. Really loved it. The next book I read was Hatchet, the classic Hatchet book from is it the 80s. It might, it might be the 80s. I'm not sure. Um, it's written by Gary Paulson, and this is a series. I did not realize that this is a series. I bought this book. This was not a Kindle Unlimited book. I did buy this one. It seemed like it would be something that my youngest would really like. And it's about a kid who is, I think, 13. He's on one of those, like, single planes. It's just him and a pilot. He's going to go visit his dad. His parents just divorced. And the plane crashes, and he is stuck in the Canadian wilderness by himself, and he's got to figure out how to survive. Really neat book. It's called Hatchet because before he got on the plane, his mother gifted him with a little hatchet. So he's got to learn how to survive all by himself because the pilot died during the plane crash. So a lot of us probably read this when we were in like elementary or middle school. Same book. I think my kid is really going to like it. I think he's still in the middle of reading it though, so I can't give you his review. But um, I think there is maybe some... Yeah, the only... The only uh, like content warning I had on this was I do think there was some taking of the Lord's name in vain and Brian, the main character, is really concerned about his mother's infidelity and he's like obsessing over it at, at points and uh, because that led to, to the demise of his parents' relationship and he just, he's very, very angry with his mother and it seems to kind of consume him at times. But at the same time, I do think it's probably realistic. At the, so, you know, there is that kind of trade-off. But this is a middle grade book, so this is not really for the younger crowd. This is for more like um, 11 to, to 13 type of age. Really good adventure story, I will give you that. The next one is The Starlet Prince, which is a YA fantasy book. Totally clean. So this is a retelling of a fairy tale that I've never heard before about a bear. I thought that was kind of interesting. Lily and the Bear is what it's called. Um, I've never heard of Lily and the Bear, so this was this was all like fresh to me. So now this one has to do with they call them Fae, F A E, but I think that means fairy. I don't know. I'm not in the like the fantasy genre, but yeah. So this is a clean book. I read it pretty quickly. It seems pretty fast paced. I thought it was a really good story. I think that's totally clean and totally good for your uh, for your daughters to read. Nothing explicit. I gave it a four and a half out of five stars. 
There is magic going on in this book. So if you don't want your kids reading any about anything about magic, then you know, there's that. My next book, I think this is my favorite book of the entire month. So last month I read The Warsaw Sisters. This month I read Within the Walls of Within These Walls of Sorrow. Same author, Amanda Barrett. Um, wow, this was this was a heavy read. Like I had to read some very light books after this one because this one just like emotionally drained me, but in a really, really good way. I'm glad I bought the, the actual like hard copy of this book. This is such a wonderful book about little known things of the occupation of Poland. So this is a World War II book. It has to do with um, Jewish and Christian characters and about one of the Jewish ghettos within Poland. And there is a pharmacy that's being run there. And it's actually based on a true story, which is cool. Like the, the characters are made up, but the actual events are all true, which just adds like such a neat layer to this entire story. And you can just tell that, that Amanda does top notch research on this. Like she is so familiar with everything that she creates this world, but it's a real world. And I, I checked, like I checked the pictures because I always like with historical novels, I like to actually like look the pictures up of the places if they're talking about a real place, just to better picture it in my mind and help me with the story a little bit. She really did her research. I, I mean, absolutely hands down one of the best World War II books I've ever read. And I remember my, my husband and I were just talking about it so much after I would put it down every night and I would tell him like, these things happen. Like, did you know this? I did not know this. And like, we would, you know, do some research and, and read more about it just because it was so surprising. So mature teens could handle it. I would have been able to handle it, but I was also a pretty uh, mature teenager. There are hints at intimacy. There are married couples in this book. So there are hints of intimacy scattered throughout, but there's nothing described. Um, it's all it's all like fade to black, closed door type of thing. I gave this one a five out of five stars. It's pretty rare if you see me giving a five out of five, this was a five out of five. The next book I read was The Marble Curse. We were given this book by Reformation Lightning Publishing and that one my son read and I read it as well. And it, this one was, um, I gave it a three out of five. This was very science based. So I feel like there's a really um, specific, there's a really targeted audience for this book. It's all about science and gadgets, time traveling and a curse and these kids have to break the curse. So it's, it's like puzzle oriented too. It's like a mystery but it's also historical because they're traveling back in time, which is kind of neat. So they're helping out all of these family members from the past, trying to break this curse. So really neat book, no content warnings at all. Okay, I needed a light book after this one. So I read A Counterfeit Betrothal and that one was such a good light book. Like that hit the spot. That was, that was such a good book. I really, really liked it. And this would be a teen to adult. I think um, older teen girls would really like this. It's about life on the American frontier and about a woman with a physical disability. So she, um, she has a disability with her foot. She has club foot. And while that doesn't center around everything, like the, the story doesn't center around her disability or anything, but it's just about her. She lost her husband in an attack and she's putting together the pieces of all of this and she's being helped out by this man and his um, brother and his brother's wife. They take her in and they help her start her life over. So it was such a cute story. I really, really enjoyed it. I'm probably gonna read all the books by this author now. That was on Kindle Unlimited. I gave it a solid like four and a half out of five. Love that book. The next one I read was The Deconstruction of Christianity. I am on the launch team for this. I don't, it's not out yet, but by the time you see this video, it's probably gonna be out. This one is by um, Elisa Childers. And um, if you follow him on social media, Red Pen Logic with Mr. B. His name is Tim Barnett. He's hilarious, but he's also 
really, really talented with apologetics. So they teamed up to write about deconstruction and what it is. I feel like this book is one of the most important books for parents of teens. If you are a Christian parent and you have a teenager, and especially if they have social media, you need to get this book because deconstruction is everywhere and everybody's talking about it and all of the cool kids are doing this thing called deconstruction. You need to know what it's about because deconstruction pops up in my news feeds and I'm not deconstructing. You need to understand what deconstructing is, what it isn't, and how to handle it if your teens come to you with this. This is, this is a very, very, very important book for parents. So go check that out. I'm, I have my hard copy coming soon. Um, but I listened to the audio of it. It was actually read by the authors, which I found really cool. Loved it. Um, I have more information on my blog about that book. So we're getting to the end and I read some secular popular books on Kindle Unlimited just to give you a good idea of what um, some of these books are about. The first one is Never Lie. So again, secular book, huge content warnings. These are for adults, okay? These are adult books, no more kid or YA. Never lie, I have not read a book this fast in years. I read it all in one afternoon. Like we had like one of those really cold January uh, days and I sat down and read Never Lie in one day. One day, it opened to like front to back, done. This is by Frieda McFadden, and it is one of the most intriguing thrillers that I have ever read in my life, but there are some serious content warnings in here. This is not a Christian book, obviously, and there's there are some fade to black scenes with intimacy. The characters, some characters married, some characters are not. It's, you know, again, secular book. What do you, you know, what do you expect? I would, because of the talk of some of the encounters, I would give this a rated R rating if I was rating it like that. So just understand that. So the thing that bugged me the most about this book was not even the intimacy because a lot of that was fade to black and we're talking about um, murder and mayhem because it's a thriller. What irritated me the most was it seems like the author doesn't know any other curse words besides using the name of Christ. <laughs> I would have rather seen her use actual curse words than using um, Jesus's name like that. Like that really, really bugged me every time she did it. And I think it was like three or four times in the entire book. I was so irritated about that. Like other than that, this would have been probably a fine book, but yeah, just be aware that that's there and it's so unnecessary. So there's talk of murder, there's talk of drugs, um, talking of intimacy between non-married couples, you know, the normal secular type of warnings. However, the story, I mean, she's a very talented writer. Like, you know, like the other stuff like really isn't needed. Like she, she had such an intriguing story and I have never been so surprised by a book ending in my life. I will say that, like that blew me away. Could not believe it. I remember like when I got to the page where everything was revealed, my jaw was on the floor and my husband was like on the other side of the room laughing at me. Could not believe it. I was curled up on the couch and it was just like, what am I reading? Like, this is, this is amazing. Like, I cannot believe, like, it was the one time I had not been able to guess the ending of the book. I never, never would have guessed that. Like, that was, that was ingenious. I think that her writing was ingenious on that. I mean, she's very talented. I'll give her that. Um, but again, secular book. So, I mean, like, you get, it, it's just so, like, two-sided. I feel like a seesaw, but it, such an intriguing story just ugh, on the content. The last book I read, I finished yesterday. It's called Ask for Andrea and really good book. But again, content warnings. So this was another really hugely popular book. I wanted to pick up some of the, the popular ones because you guys might be reading them or might want to read them. So Ask for Andrea. This was a thriller mystery serial killer book. <laughs> really cool. This one is about three ghosts. 
who, who have been murdered by the same serial killer, they team up to try to keep him from killing anyone else and try to seek justice. However, this is not a Christian book at all. There is no talk of heaven or hell. It's just like when they die, they're in this like limbo until they figure things out and then they have to like go into their memories to find other family members and that's their version of heaven, I guess. I thought that was just so silly and goofy and kind of sad as a Christian reading that. Like, I don't know. I thought, I thought it was kind of silly. But the rest of the book was actually really good. Like, the, like it, it was a thriller. It made your heart pound. Like, you could not guess what was going to happen next. But, um, yeah, really good. Really satisfying ending. I gave it a three and a half out of five just because... It was kind of silly with the whole like ghost thing, but it is not overtly inappropriate other than that. Like you're not going to find inappropriate bedroom scenes with that. Um, that's, that's not what the serial killer does, thankfully, because if it had, I would have clicked my Kindle off and found something else to read. Um, that would have been a, a did not finish type of book. All of the characters are athe atheist or at best agnostic. So we're dealing with physical violence here because this is a thriller book. This is about a serial killer and it does focus heavily on revenge. So just, you know, kind of go into it knowing that like, you know, it's all kind of about, about revenge plots. So as a Christian, it's kind of weird reading these types of books. But again, you know, I like to read a wide uh, variety of books so I can bring to you good and bad you know, because sometimes we need like a content warning, like this one's good, this one's bad. All right, there is my book list for January. I'm going to start on my February list here, probably today, and we'll see how far I get. <laughs> so what are you reading this month? I would love to know what you're reading. If there's a specific book that you would like me to review, let me know down in the comment section. I would love to see what kinds of books you want me to review for you or your kids and that's it. I'll see you guys next time. I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.